What's up everyone, it's your girl Joey Kichao here For those who are new to the channel For those who are new to the What's up everyone, it's your girl Joey Kichao here For those who are new to the channel, welcome Karibuni Feel free to take a seat and hit that subscribe button So that you can become a part of the family For those who are back for the second, third or even umpteen time then Welcome back to my channel If you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, I'll leave my handles down here then you definitely have an inkling of what this video is about i'd ask you guys to send me questions uh for so i can film a q a for you guys and i feel like if you follow the channel you've seen a lot of hair stuff and in my first video i sort of did a poetic sort of thing of what you need to expect on this channel but you haven't seen much of me and i haven't answered some of your maybe personal questions yeah so in today's video i thought i'll do a q a and i'm going to be responding to the questions that you guys asked me on instagram and i'm going to be reading them from my trusty phone over here and without further ado let's just jump straight into the video and the first question is how tall are you some of us wish we were tall if wishes were horses you my friend would be like a giant you'd be like Yao Ming. Yao Ming is I think a Chinese basketball player but yeah that's not the point. The internet says um five seven or five eight but that happened because I was trying to convert from centimeters to feet and inches but in centimeters I'm pretty sure I am 173 centimeters tall or short however you want to see it. The second question is I know who this question is from and if you're actually watching this Q&A that cake wasn't yours brah that cake asie kuwepo na lake halipo sorry the third question is have I ever been in a fight? if I'm being honest yes I have been in um, very many fights but that was when I was younger um, I only have brothers so I sort of grew up as a dude as well so in terms of playing and everything and we used to hang out with like my bros friends and you know how boys resolve things if we are fighting we are fighting and then there are these two particular people who i have in mind who always used to start fights like you couldn't disagree with them and me who am i at just because i'm a girl i fall back <laughs> come i will deal with you very squarely so i'm not proud of it but I used to win those fights and I'm glad I used to win those fights and the other fights I used to get into are when like if you threatened either one of my brothers whether they were older or younger my friend you're gonna catch these hands but after that I really haven't gotten into fights which is a good thing yeah it's a good thing and I attribute that to meeting Jesus then the next question is how long have you been nappy? Um, this is a... <laughs> I find this question... I understand what uh, is being asked but I need to explain that I've been natural all my life in the sense that I've never used a relaxer. However, my hair really suffered from like excessive major heat damage. In fact, people used to think my hair was pumped and the salons that we used to go to, Zile, the salons, we call them the Vibanda, like they are, they are very local salons where people are not entirely professional or qualified. It's like how you learn by doing apprenticeship. So you learn, you, you do whatever you've been taught. So I had a lot of heat damage and I remember at, I think it was in 20, must have been in 2011 when my hair was, it was long but it was and I had I had three strands of hair on my head because I'd been flat ironing and I'd been going to someone whose cousin was practicing to be a saloonist. So when you went there as like a hair model <laughs> they used to they didn't charge you or they used to charge I think a hundred bob but they used to do a lot of stuff on your head. So you're like, ooh, that's a killing. Um, I'm saving money. Shock on me. I lost a lot of hair. But then I decided to go natural in terms of transitioning from heat damage in 2015 towards the end of 2015 is when I started transitioning from heat 
actually it was the middle of 2015 it was around i think july august there i started transitioning from heat damage and that's when i started now healthy hair practices and yeah etc so if i if really i've been natural all my life but i started transitioning from heat damage in mid 2015 so i think i actually started seeing my curl pattern back in now the middle of around 2016 so i wouldn't want to say like two and a half three years but I had to grow out the heat damage first and then I trimmed it off. So, really, I've been natural all my life, but with a technicality that I always had heat damaged hair. And I feel like I've rambled on that one, but I really needed to explain that. So, moving on to the next one length check. <laughs> I have a thing about length checks. I have a thing about length checks because anytime I've tried to do it, eh, it has cost me a lot. And I link the video for when, like one of my salon hair salon horror stories in Nairobi, right here, and you can check it out. So when I hear length check, I panic a bit because in my head I'm hearing I have to use heat, and also in my head I'm hearing that I might have to trust someone else with heat on my hair. And once bitten, twice shy. Yeah, as in once bitten like a mandazi. Twice chai. <laughs> I really just had to do that. But um, I don't know that I'll do a length check soon. As far as I'm concerned, when I gently tug at my hair, either when I've stretched it from all the... I've been doing a series uh, where I repeat different stretching methods without using heat on type 4 hair. So when I've done that, and if you look through those videos i'll try and link the one that is most recent right over here my hair is usually like i think either like armpit or bra strap depending on which side i <laughs> i measure it and where i like like the part of my hair where i measure i'm really looking for those words but that's because when i went for some professional trim and that woman butchered my hair. By the way, I still have feelings about it and PTSD. <laughs> but um, the, the back part of my hair, she didn't, she cut less of it. So when it's been growing out, even when I went for a trim, I think my hair is actually longer at the back. But in general, I think it's about maybe armpit length or bra strap length. I just know it's past shoulder length. But if I ever do to, decide to do, uh, what's it called? A length check. I'ma hit you up. I'ma send you the direct link. And that day, hey, yeah, I don't know when it will come, but it might come. The next question is: Are you dating? <laughs> well, well. <laughs> <laughs> next question. <laughs> See ya. Then the question after that is. Um, what's the first thing that I noticed when I meet anyone? This one, this one gave me a hard time because I had to think about it. And I think if I'm not wrong, and if I know myself well, I probably notice the eyes and the eyelashes first. I only notice those things if I can see, okay, <laughs> if I'm wearing contacts or my spectacles. Then I think I notice eyes because of the eye color and I, I, Although it's very <laughs> specific to some people, I like to maintain eye contact and I like to look at people in the eye. So usually the first thing I see is definitely like your eyes and the eye color, especially if it stands out because I have a thing for like brown, you know those eyes that people look at you and you feel like they can see into your soul. <laughs> those ones. And then I notice the lashes because I mean, they're there with the eyes. Also, if you have like those long, naturally long or curly eyelashes, I, I don't know. I just have a thing for lashes. So those are, I'd say, the first two related things that I notice whenever I meet somebody for the first time. Moving on swiftly, huh, I feel like these last two questions are... Eh, I don't want to say heavy, but they, they, they made me, they made me, 
think a bit and in answering them i feel like i'll also be sharing critical pieces of myself with you so i'll just go straight into the last two questions and the first one is if you could do or be anything what would that be not to sound um escapist but the honest truth is there a lying truth why do we say the honest truth anyway let me not digress the truth is that if i could do anything ha huh, it would be like the will of god for my life and if i could be anything i'd want to be a good and faithful servant the reason i give that answer is because um if you watch the first ever video which i'm going to link over here you might have picked that faith is a critical aspect of my life in fact there i say it's foundational it's the basis for everything in my life so i would want to say be successful i'd want to uh, be running a successful business i'd want to uh do like other things but in all this like i'd want to do ministry i'd want to travel i'd want to do and be all these things but at the end of the day the thing that i really have to focus on and i have to draw from like it's not an after the afterthought it's the first thing that influences whatever i want to be in whichever season is like what god is speaking over my life and what he's asking of me in that season i realize how saying those things might lead to more questions and i'm i'm open to hit me up in the comment section and i'll try to or even my socials and i try my best to better articulate what i'm saying or answer any questions that may arise from this so the light just changed but i'm going to keep going yeah um because god is my foundation then everything that i do or whoever i want to be is everything that he wants me to do or whoever he wants me to be so if in the moment he's calling me to be eh <laughs> uh, it's a bit extreme i think if he's calling me to be unemployed and serving and volunteering in church then that's what i'll be and i will be content in all that because he's with me if he's calling me to be like the ceo yes i said ceo <laughs> of my own company and um out there doing like amazing things well amazing according to maybe society's construct of amazing then that's where i want to be so ultimately i would want to be a good and faithful servant and i want to do whatever god is calling me to do whatever that is because he also says that he'll fulfill the desires of our hearts and if i continue to be rooted in him then my desires will be in line with his desires so that even when he's fulfilling that man he's literally fulfilling his perfect will over my life and man as in that that's that's that should be the ultimate definition of contentment for me and i'm not saying that because nimefika but i've already gotten there <laughs> direct translation but it's that that's what i'd want to do and continue doing and in so doing and in saying that i'd also expect that anyone who hears this and uh sees me doing any different would be like yo but you i thought you said um but i thought you defined yeah in a way to say sort of accountability in maybe a way i don't know if that's the answer that you might have been looking for but i've answered it as honestly after as honestly as i can after introspection and yeah self assessment so that was the first question of the last two and this like be misbehaving but simenaniona see you see me so i'll continue <laughs> so the last question is um what do you do for so hey so <laughs> what do you do for self care with like the emoji of like the nini with a halo ha <laughs> at the end ah uh, I I ha huh. Oof I feel like I might answer this for like 56 minutes so I'll try not to make it as long but um what I do for self care is I I okay this 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 is please don't judge me 
I love to sleep. I love to sleep because when I sleep, my brain is off. And when it is off, it's like it gives me a break so that when I wake up, I might not be in the same headspace that I was in when I was sleeping. So yes, well, for self-care, Mazemi, I sleep. Not like sleeping unhealthily. Why am I looking? <laughs> this is hard. But I sleep, yes. And I love to read books. I like to get lost in books because sometimes it's like they allow you to be in life but in another world, if you get what I mean. So there are books that you read, Maze, and you get mm, so invested and you're like, whew, everything sort of disappears. And by the time you get back to your world, things are not as heavy. The other thing I do for self-care is, what do I do, by the way? I do whatever my like I feel at that time. In this sense, not like if I feel like jumping off a cliff, I go jump off a cliff. No, whatever it is that I feel would help me in that situation. So there are times when I write and like I write, 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 write completely. Not that you can write halfway, but there are times that I write, there are those times that I read, there are those times that there's a specific person that I'll be wanting to talk to, not necessarily to talk about my problems, but more to just hang and chill out because quality time is one of my love languages and just finding out how they're doing when it helps to get me out of my mind and that really helps sometimes i just walk like i could walk for kilometers kitamba used to run but someone told me that was an escapist way like it was running away from my problems so i tried to be different so i walk i'm not walking away from problems <laughs> or issues but that walking sort of allows me to think and pray and just being in nature i love karura so much Oof. but when they said sujia python was found there i was like hey my friends my love and my phobia in one place um <laughs> thank you very much as Sana. so since then i haven't been back <laughs> back there but i love walking in nature so when i say i do whatever feels like it will help at that moment it's because i also sort of have learned the cues to pick up on some things that I might need in that particular time. And the one thing that looking back I realized in very major, I want to say crisis, times of my life that I always do is I travel. And that is very related to, is that English? Very related to, no. That's just related to the reading of books. It's like going to another world. It's sort of, I leave everything behind and I get to think in an environment that is not full of all these things that are currently in my environment. So because of that, I've been able to go to, well, I, I want to say the East African countries because that allowed me to go to Tanzania, that allowed me to go to Uganda, and that's also been the reason why i went to rwanda and all these times these trips are like on a whim they're not planned and that's how i know that they're part of that sort of self-care sort of journey and thing but the one thing that <laughs> i say and i say unashamedly about self-care we think about self-care sometimes as a remedy or a solution for a place that we are already in but i also think of self-care as preventative in the sense that you don't have to get to that drastic moment where you have to now be um, sort of sorting things out after they've already come up or happened. So as part of my preventative self-care routine-ish is that man, may I pray and read the word because I mean that truth man, so the truth that is in the word it. It really just refreshes and it allows the my mind in particular not to be the like center of excuse me my my world and then it has like everything for every season so it's like I'm equipped before I get to some spaces and that also allows me to be able to know how to react or it's like a weapon that you're getting to a fight where you you're already armed and you know how this victory is going to happen and prayer also helps and fellowship with like fellow believers yeah, fellowship with fellow believers usually helps because then you also get to see stuff from different angles and perspectives even when you're really just okay and then i 
jealously guard my heart and my mind in the sense that sometimes I try to avoid social media for that reason specifically I have those moments where it feels like social media is heavily influencing a lot of things the way I'm thinking the way I'm I'm seeing things the way I'm handling things the way I'm reacting to things how I feel about my life oh it's not as glamorous as how I feel about the things I'm doing maybe the success is not as high as so and so's or whatever or relationships and all these other things but I find that the the, the reading of the word the prayer also and the like jealously guarding my space in terms of um, connection to social media and the information that is coming the information that I, I allow to come into my life that helps a lot in terms of the preventative um, <laughs> sort of self-care routine that I have so I hope that I've really answered that question even though I feel like I might have repeated some things I just needed to sort of articulate it in the way that I can see it in my mind. If you see me just gazing into space, it's because like, it's like I'm reading something from my mind. But yeah, those are the questions that you asked and the questions that I was answering for today. Thank you so much if you sent in questions. If you're not part of the IG or Facebook fam and would still like to answer, would still like to ask questions, then let me know in the comment section down below, ask your questions and the minute I'm filming another q and I'll be sure to answer them and I'll also be sure to answer them just in the comment section in case it's something that's really time sensitive. Also, I really love interacting with you guys. So let me know if you have been liking this sort of sit down videos I've done. Have, have I done a couple? I feel like after I've done one, it's like, ooh, I've done a couple of them because I'm also almost always doing tutorials or yeah side stuff so let me know what you think about that let me know what more content you'd like to see on the channel and if especially if you'd want me to sort of share on faith issues i can pick and like segment a particular day of the week where i'll be putting out extra videos just for that topic in particular especially because i've been wanting to delve into it but sometimes um it, it gets a bit i don't want to say tricky but yeah i've been wanting to so let me know if you'd want me to yes yes thank you for watching the video all the way to this particular part even with like the changing lights it's like cloudy and then sunny because nairobi weather is a teenage girl hmm. anyway if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you liked it enough to give it a thumbs up, then share with your friends, let them know, let them know, let them watch, yeah, yeah. And hit that subscribe button if you still haven't subscribed to the channel and you've already gotten to this part of the video. Also hit the notification bell so that you can get timely alerts whenever I drop new videos. Without, today I'm not saying without further ado. Hmm. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourself and I will see you in the next video.